G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today we're going to be checking out these little bad boys. Now, these are the JJ Pro T1 and the T2, so the T's. It reminded me of Terminator, actually. That was a cool movie. Anyway, uh, what these are, these are some tiny little FPV micro brush quadcopters that uh, have a bit of a special board in them, and that also has a bit of an inbuilt receiver. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be sticking them on the bench, giving them a bit of an overview, and then taking both of them out and giving them a test flight. All right, let's get started. All righty, so here they are on the bench and uh, let's have a little bit of a quick overview of the things you're gonna get. So uh, depending on what you get, so this is the T1 and this is the T2. And then each one of these is gonna come with these. Not very exciting, but still useful. Uh, some little rubber grommets for your motors, some spare props, two little rubber bands to hold your batteries in, a prop tool, which can be very, very useful. And you also get a 600 milliamp 1S battery. Rightio, let's have a look at the quads. Oh, and you also get some instructions as well, which is uh, fairly useful. Right here, so the, uh, you can see the difference straight away uh, between the T1 and the T2. They are very, very differently designed, uh, designed little quads. Now, in terms of their length, uh, I guess motor to motor, the T1's coming in at about 95 millimeters, so hopefully you guys can see that. And the T2 is a little bit shorter, actually, and that's coming in at about 82 millimeters. So uh, this one is probably a little bit more compact, and their frames are very different. So you can see this one's sort of your standard sort of I guess your bottom plate with a little top sort of pod And then this one reminds me very much of the QX80 how it sort of has this ribbed part around the outside and offers a little bit better protection But this one is probably also a little bit heavier um, in terms of the motors both the motors are exactly the same on here So uh, they're rocking some tiny uh, tiny little brush motors Well, I shouldn't say tiny because they are 8.5 millimeter brush motors and that allows these to spin these little bit bigger props These sort of more blunt bullnose props and uh, get a little bit better thrust out of the motors. Uh, in the front here we have a little 25 milliwatt 40 channel VTX which is very very cool and uh, the interesting thing about this one they don't have dip switches on the side these ones actually have a little press button so uh, that's that's uh, that's give or take some people like being able to change their channels like that other people like dip switches personally for me I really like the dip switches so I can tell exactly what channel I'm on I don't have to cycle through them or black out block out anyone else's but uh, yeah that's just 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 a little option now uh, we did talk about the battery before so they do take a 600 milliamp 1s battery and uh, you're probably looking at about five minutes average flight time give or take so maybe as little as three or as high as uh, seven depending on what sort of flying you are doing but they are a ton of fun now let's have a look at something that is a little bit different actually in these JJ pros the t1s and the t2s than are uh, the standard ones we've been looking at recently because recently uh, I've been having a bit of a play with this one this is the QX80 I think this is the Sheen. this is is the LT105 and you can see they look very very similar to these these two little quads right here so what is the actual difference are uh, and here this is this is probably the biggest difference between those two and this one these ones have an inbuilt receiver in their board so these boards are actually running the flight controller which is a ski sky flight controller and uh, that is pretty much a nays 32 clone so it does run the nays 32 software so this is only an f1 board right here and the other very very distinct and important difference is you can bind this up to your radio you don't need a separate receiver because there's a receiver inbuilt on the board but you are going to need uh, a bit of a module if you're using a Tyrannus. So if you did want to use these with your Tyrannus, you are going to need to get one of these little orange modules. Or uh, if you have the radio that actually works with these, this would be fine, the DMS or DMX2 or whatever, whatever protocol that is. But uh, so yeah, the only way that these are going to bind up to my Tyrannus is if I actually stick this in the back. So that you've got to factor that in. If you do have a Tyrannus and you're looking at getting one of these little micros and you get one for a good price, just remember you're going to have to get either a compatible module just here or possibly put in a different receiver now on that note uh, you do have plenty of space in here so you would easily be able to put a receiver inside here especially this one this one's probably my favorite actually uh, my favorite between these two because you do have a ton of space inside the frame so if you did want to pull it put in a full-size flight controller a little bit like how I have here on the LT 105 uh, I put a d4r2 in here you can get some pretty good range on these little bad boys now if you wanted to both of these boards can be flat 
flash would be to flight, but I've left mine on clean flight just uh, for the purposes of these videos and flying them around and seeing how they go. Now, speaking of, I guess, clean flight or beta flight, something very interesting was happening when I was plugging these and binding these up to the computer. Uh, this model right here, and I don't know what the difference was, uh, it just was not saving its settings. So I was plugging it in, setting it, setting it up for angle mode and uh, setting all my switches and making sure that was right because you can configure these things just like any normal, I guess, full-sized uh, racing quad. You can set these things to do what, you can set these things up to do whatever you want sort of in terms of the clean flight configurator. But uh, this one just wasn't saving my settings or was not saving my modes, which was very, very irritating. So after a little bit of searching I guess just trying and trying I did have some success but that was something that uh, might be a little bit concerning for some people trying to set these up I found these uh, a little bit more difficult actually than some of these ones so these ones are fairly easy I guess the Esheen the QX 90s QX 80s or the LT 105 so this one is my favorite but uh, setting these ones up there was a little bit more rigmarole involved but once they were set up uh, I was very very surprised because of the the Naze flight controller or the F1 flight controller that's in here I was expecting this to perform a little bit more poorly or not quite as good but I feel like this one here the L2 is probably the most stable little micro I have it had hardly any drift when it was flying around and uh, it felt very very stable in the air and uh, I wish I could say the same for this one here the uh, the T1 but this one seemed to have a fair bit of oscillation so I'm not sure if it's because the board just needs to be pushed back into the middle a little bit or if it's a little bit off center or what is going on maybe it's one bad motor or one bad prop but this one wasn't nearly as stable as this one right here so if I had to pick I would definitely be picking this one here the T2 out of the two now some things to be mindful of is beside that little uh, issue trying to get them to save you probably are your antenna is very very vulnerable up the top here so uh, you probably are going to want to run some zip ties or something like that up to protect it in a crash because if this lands the wrong way upside down you can uh, kiss this little antenna and this VTX goodbye because that's not going to last very very long at all because uh, that's a bit of an issue because all the pressure is going to go in there and it is going to snap off at the base and another little reason that I do like the uh, the T2 over the T1 is because uh, on the bottom here you can see the T2 offers much better motor protection so right here you've got these little bits of carbon right here they're gonna if you do have an impact or this thing does drop out of the sky it's gonna be perfectly fine but on here I would be a little bit worried about your motors and then the third little thing uh, you can see here on the T2 because of the way the mo those motors are these props actually spin higher than this little I guess the top plate right here so that's going to enable you to run a bit larger props if you want to whereas on the T1 if you wanted to run some larger props you might have some issues with them scratching or scathing on just here if they're bumping against the frame so uh, overall I definitely think that the T2 is a much better much better version than the T1 but that's how they look on the bench let's uh, let's take them up and show you guys some DVR of these things flying around because that's what we all want to see and uh, I'll give a little bit of a commentary of just how well these things fly or well this one flies and we'll have a little bit of a look at the, T T1, the T1 and also the T2 of these things zipping around the house. So let's cut to that in three, two, one. Boop. Radio. so uh, here we are on board and this is with the T2 so the, the square sort of looking one. Uh, and flying that around and I feel like you can notice the naze a little bit when you're flying around It probably doesn't feel quite as good as the uh, the other ones that are running an f3 board But definitely between the two I found that this one was a lot more stable I don't know if uh, this one did need a little bit more PID tuning But uh, it was still significantly better than the t1 because I'll show you some footage of that a little bit later on or uh, but Yeah, but so I found this one a little bit harder to fly between the two uh, or maybe it just felt a little bit different on the sticks and might be a little bit different with some tuning. So uh, taking it outside here, you can see looking into the camera, uh, it was, wasn't, didn't perform too badly, um, but I was getting a little bit of breakup, probably a little bit more than I was usually as well. And I want to show you some footage right here. Uh, and this is when I first started it up, for some reason, uh, the, the screen like had all this noise going through it and then it just went away after a little bit of the battery. So I wasn't 100% sure what was going on there. Alrighty, so here is the T1, So, uh, and I didn't quite like this one as much because you can see the oscillations as it's flying around, it is a lot more jumpy, so this one was a lot harder to control, I felt like it was all over the shop, a uh, little, little stack there, still it was nice how I could still get back up and fly just after a little bit of hopping, but yeah, I definitely felt like uh, the faster you wanted to go with this one, it was just out of control, and I don't know if that was the, the PIDs or something going on, but it had a lot of oscillations as it was flying it around. So uh, this was sort of flying out of control and you're just trying to hang on the whole time trying to get around. So it, it wasn't really the most enjoyable flight experience. You're sort of just 
hanging on for a bit of a wild ride trying to fly this around. And it really reminds me of like the first micros that I built about a year ago. Uh, I didn't really have that precise control and a few more oscillations. So that's something to take, take note of. So there it is, there's my review of the uh, the T1 and the T2, and i got to say, definitely uh, more of a fan of the T2 than the T1. Uh, this one is a lot more stable, I guess, than this one, but maybe I just had some problems with the, the T1. I'm not 100% sure what's going on. Maybe I'll try switching out all those motors and the things like that in there. So definitely some cool little quadcopters, and if you've got one of the right radios, probably uh, useful because you won't need to get a receiver because they are rocking the ski sky board. But uh, in, my, in my opinion, I'm probably more of a fan of the LT-105, and I'll leave a link for that somewhere up here, because uh, you can fit a full-size receiver in there, and uh, you can bind it up, I guess, to whatever sort of radio you do like, because these things were a little bit more complicated, and I do wish that uh, they were much easier to save the settings because I don't know what was going on there. That was kind of a little bit annoying as well. So in terms of ease of setting up, I would definitely probably go with the LT-105 over some of these, but still a fantastic, fun little quadcopter. And definitely if someone uh, bought one of these around and said, do I want to have a bash? I would definitely be very keen to give some of these a flight. Anyway, uh, subscribe for more FPV-related content. And as always, happy flying.